Okay, folks, we're going to record this video for the fifth time. <laughs> oh, well. So let's go back to our talk about our concepts of integration. So first off, this was our original definition. Pretty simple. We had an integral on a path. We parametrized it. And then the next thing we did is we developed a bound for the integral. It's called the ML, the max of the function, the length of the path it was done on. Now, this is kind of like brute force. This is what it means. This is what you do it. It's like saying the Riemann sum is how you do integrals and never use any theory. This is a little bit better. It's especially useful if you want to prove something equals zero because you bound it by something that's zero. Well, then the answer has to be zero because this is a modulus. Now, these are useful. They're algebraic techniques. They're, they're like a tool, like a garden. It garden. Uh, uh, shovel it. It doesn't do much, but it gets certain jobs done. So what did we do next? Well, what we did next is we said, well, if we discover that on all closed curves, loops that come back to us, if we have a function that all those integrals equal zero, and we never bothered to ask how all of them are zero, but we then proved that the function has an antiderivative. This is how you calculate it. You have a region on which these functions exist. The point lives within that region. And when you have an antiderivative integrals on paths within that region, different than that, those paths is simply the beginning minus the end. It's a little bit more powerful, but how do you prove that every loop equals zero? And it just shows that the integral is directly related to the antiderivative. And it tells us that some things are really nice, like when you can see that a function is, has an antiderivative, certain integrals are nice. That's a little hammer. It can do things, but you know what? Doesn't happen all that often. But when you can see that a function has an antiderivative, it's usable. Then we did something that's a little bit more tough. We had this idea called homotopy. We had a region G, we had two paths in it, and we had these uh, two integrals equal, and it was called Cauchy's theorem, but it required this G was special, that F was holomorphic on G in order for this to happen. And holomorphic means that it has space inside of it. It's not thin like lines. Now, this is much, much more powerful. I mean, this is going to be a hammer. But it doesn't solve everything. Now, I want to point out that this tools like this are kind of surprising. Let's take, for example, the simple multiplication. x minus 3 times x plus 3. Why well, that equals x squared minus 9. And then when you do x minus a times x plus, squared, x plus a, you get x squared minus a squared. That was the distributive law, and you learned how to do it very early. But seeing this is called factoring. It's more powerful. You're making use of a known fact. It's a tool. It's a simple tool. It's an algebraic tool. We can even use it in the complex. This, this tool, this algebraic tool, is this one. It's used at the right time at the, for the right job. You don't use it to dig a basement, but you use it to plant your tulips. All right, so now we want to prove a brand new theorem. I'm going to build a better hammer. Cauchy's integral theorem. Now this integral theorem is really important and it's used a lot, but not exclusively. We're wanting to learn how to integrate. We want to be effective at integrating. So first we're going to start with f being holomorphic on g inside of c. And we want to look at an integral on a circle centered at w radius r of f of z over z minus w dz, and we want to put 1 over 2 pi i in front of it. And when we calculate this, we're going to discover, holy crap, it's f of w. Now, w is a fixed value, but there is an additional condition. So we're going to draw a picture of that condition. Pictures are important. So here's g inside of c. It's big, it's thick, it's fat. You pick any point, you can get find a disk that fits completely inside of it. W 
must be in G. And this circle centered at W radius R must be in G. But even more than that, the closure, which is the solid disk centered at W radius R, must be in G. So this function, f of z, has to be really nice. Now please notice z minus w in the bottom, 1 over z minus w at w. 1 over z minus w. It's messed up at w. w makes it 0. But f of z, what's ever in the numerator, has got to be nice in a whole region. When that happens, then the integrals, evaluation in this form, is just a Figure out f of w. In other words, just plug w into that. That's the answer to this integral. This is crazy. That's a powerful, cool theorem that integrals, when written the right way, have simple answers. So we're going to prove this. Now, I've shown you a couple of tools. I wonder how many of them we're going to use. So first off, I'm not going to prove that this integral directly. Instead, I'm going to subtract those two pieces. I'm going to take new color. I'm going to take 1 over 2 pi i integral f of z over z minus w. I'm not going to write the w come r. That's what the c contains. Minus f of w. And I want to calculate its size. Now, you know what? The minute I do that, you probably should be thinking ML, the ML theorem. But that doesn't look like an integral. Hmm. How can I make it look like an integral? Uh, well, I'm going to multiply this by 2 pi i. I'm investigating this value. So now, that's f of z minus w, integral over that circle, minus 2 pi i f of w. And we saw earlier, when we actually had done an integral uh, calculation, it's in your homework as well, that the integral over a circle of dz over z minus w, if that circle is centered at w, the answer is 2 pi i. So you know what? That 2 pi i can write as an integral. Oh. It's going to start looking really nice. And since f of w, w is a fixed point, I can just put it here. And all of a sudden, this is looking like an integral, because difference of an integral, I can just write it this way. Common denominator. And now, this is set up for our ML theorem, that an in absolute value of an integral will be less than or equal to ML. And L is the length of the arc. Well, that circle is centered at W radius R, so that's 2 pi R. And so we need to figure out m. Well, m is the max of f of z minus f of w over z minus w, absolute value, which is the max of f of z minus f of w over z minus w on c. But that's just the radius of the circle we called r here. So this is the max of f of z minus f of w on c over r times 2 pi r. And we now have this integral bounded by the max of a function on a c of f of z minus f of w times 2 pi. Now we go back to its holomorphism. Here's the w, here's the radius r, the function is holomorphic here, it's differentiable. 
differentiable means continuous. Continuous means that given an epsilon, I can make this small enough by shrinking the circle, the delta. So this, by choice of r, can be made less than epsilon over 2 pi times 2 pi epsilon. Our original calculation can be made less than epsilon for any epsilon. Oh my goodness, that means it must be zero. And that proves the Cauchy Integral Theorem. This is how it can be written. Now, that looks terrible, but actually 99% of the time it's actually used this way. You're just doing integral with something inside, and your answer is going to be 2 pi i times some f of w. And the important thing is this circle is centered at w of radius r. This is matched to that. Cauchy's Integral Theorem. Now, I'm going to do a problem using Cauchy's Integral Theorem, but it won't be entirely smooth. Why? Well, not all integrals look exactly like that. So, let's do the following integral. The integral of dz over z squared minus 2z, and I'm going to do it on a circle centered at the origin, radius 1. Now, that doesn't look like C minus, uh, z minus 0 in the bottom. So, well, I could do partial fraction decomposition. Maybe that'll help. Algebra is always a nice tool to pull out. So there's going to be some numerator here. It's a numerator here. And we're going to be able to determine those values. And uh, let's see, I believe this is minus a half and this is a half. Now, this one reads c minus 0, which matches that 0. So this is screaming for the Cauchy's integral theorem. Since the function minus 1 half is differentiable in a region that contains that circle's closure, the disk. That means the answer will be the function minus 1 half evaluated at 0, which is minus 1 half, that's f of w, times 2 pi i. This piece will produce minus pi i. But this one, I can't use Cauchy's integral theorem because the circle is centered at 0, but 2 is in the bottom there. So I'm going to draw a picture. Pictures. Very important. So here's 2. Here's this circle. And now I'm going to look at this whole function. Since I'm being asked to integrate a function, and I want you to notice that this function is a very nice function. It only has a problem at 2. This is a region of where it is holomorphic. Just There's some g. And you know what? This is contractible to a point. Or you can say it's a closed loop, doesn't matter. That integral is zero. And so we have to use Cauchy's integral theorem. We have to do it. That's pretty cool. All right. Well, now that we have Cauchy's integral theorem, let's see how a function can be given in a kind of a nasty format and we're able to apply it. What tools and techniques do we have to use to get there? So I'm going to do the integral of dz over, let's say, z squared plus 1. And, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to have that be my gamma that we're going to integrate this thing on. So there's gamma, this rectangle. I want to integrate this over gamma. Huh. Bummer. What to do, what to do. Well, 
Cauchy's integral theorem says that I somehow want this to be an integral around a, about a circle. And you know what? Seems to me that a circle centered at i radius 1 doesn't hit the bad points in the bottom. So the integral of this gamma, and now I have to draw a region where this entire function, there's a 1 up here, that this, this function is holomorphic in a region so I can use a homotopy and make it equal to the integral over, over the circle. So I'm going to put a dot here, put a bigger dotted line here, and say in this region, are we staying away from i? Yes, we're outside of some circle. Are we staying away from minus i? Yep, we're inside, so we have a donut around i. This function is holomorphic in that region. We're not getting too close to i. We're not getting too close to minus i, so it's differentiable. Therefore, this integral, by the rule of homotopy, that gamma is homotopically to, to equal to the circle centered at i radius 1, this is the integral over the, this is the integral over C I 1 of my original function 1 over z squared plus 1 dz. Now I have an i here, and that i is part of the roots of that expression. Now, do we want to use partial fraction decomposition again? Actually, we don't need to. There's another algebraic trick we can do. If you do partial fraction decomposition, it's going to be fine. You'll get the same answer. It's just much quicker to do this. I, we want that in the denominator. We don't want that in the denominator. So one thing is I can push this up to the numerator. And so now the question is, if we use f of z equals 1 over z plus i, and we're looking at this circle, is it true that 1 over z plus i is differentiable everywhere in that side of the circle, even at i? And the answer is yes. That's a nice differentiable function. So there is a disk on which this function is differentiable. It includes i, but that's okay. Therefore, that's analytic on the closure of that disk. And that I matches that I. Therefore, Cauchy's theorem can be applied. So guess what? The answer is 2 pi I. And the answer is just evaluate this at I. This integral is pi. We used homotopy, algebraic trick, Identifying a region of a closed disk in which a function is holomorphic or differentiable and making sure that the, that the integral had the circle centered at the factor in the bottom so it can be solved by evaluation. There's a super cool application of Cauchy's integral theorem. So, what happens when we do these problems? So first off, form. We love this form. But that does not mean it's going to solve the problem because you need to get this as well. So homotopy is a crucial part, but also the integral over a closed path for a simple holomorphic function with no messes up, the whole region is nice, that equals zero is another tool we use. So we use homotopies to change this, and we use holomorphic function over regions to get zero pieces. And when in doubt, grunge, go back to the old definition. Or we use the ML formula. 
all of these are very powerful tools for you.